This is probably the single most successful hedge fund in the history of the industry. Is it true that you never hired people from the investment industry? Never. You know, we're very secretive about what we do. In 1978, a broke professor from Brookline, Massachusetts, saw a weakness on Wall Street that he knew he could exploit. And then in a week, everything came together for me. I, I was no longer puzzled. I understood why they did everything. During the early 70s, the most traditional way to buy and sell stocks was to watch the prices go up and down on a screen and hedge your bets on whether you could turn a profit. However, Jim Simons knew there had to be a pattern to all of this. So you were a code cracker I was. until... And with his team of geniuses, the professor used his mathematical knowledge to create a system that changed global economics forever. And then the NSA came calling. That's the National Security Agency. This is the story of Jim Simons. Well, the short talk is this. I did a lot of math, I made a lot of money, and I gave almost all of it away. It's April 25th, 1938, and Marcia Simons just gave birth to her only child, James Harris Simons, also known as Jim Simons. Marcia and her husband Matthew raised Jim in a wealthy and friendly neighborhood in Brookline, Massachusetts, where the future mathematician stayed for most of his early life. And it didn't take long for Simons to develop a passion for math. He fell in love with the subject during his time at Newton High School, already leaving the school at 17 years old to study for a bachelor's degree in mathematics at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, more commonly referred to as MIT. However, he couldn't stay in Massachusetts forever, and eventually moved away from the area while studying for his PhD, which would lay the foundations for the rest of his life as a mathematician. Bertram Costin guided Jim through his PhD in mathematics at the University of California, Berkeley, with Simons graduating in 1961 at just 23 years old. But now that his time at school was finally over, the mathematician needed to start earning some money because, you know, he was broke. Although Jim Simons had worked as a stockroom worker at his local gardening store at 14 years old, the genius got his first real job in 1964. And this role was much cooler than sweeping floors and stacking shelves. Simons worked as a code breaker for the National Security Agency after leaving Berkeley with a PhD in mathematics. He had always had a passion for pattern recognition, so working as a code breaker seemed like a perfect fit for Jim. However, Simons also furthered his career in the maths world by teaching mathematics at Harvard University and MIT during his time at the NSA. Although he now had plenty of eye-catching job titles on his resume, Simons was still in debt and was looking for ways to bring in more income to pay off these debts as quickly as possible. Taking the code-breaking job at the NSA doubled his monthly income, and teaching math was helping out too. But during the 1960s, Jim decided to take the leap of faith and embark on his biggest challenge to date, investing. And hey, if Simons can turn math into billions, the least you can do is turn a click into a subscription. No equations required. Alongside some of his colleagues, Jim Simons started an electronic stock trading company called iStar, with the idea of using his knowledge of mathematics to take over Wall Street and bring in some much needed cash to pay off his debts. However, the trading firm never found success forcing Jim to return to his life as a professor and give up on his dream of using mathematics on Wall Street. But this wasn't even it, because after publicly criticizing the Vietnam War, Simon's life was about to get even tougher. As a government employee, being critical of such a divisive topic was always going to cause issues for Jim. And in 1968, he was fired from his role at the Institute for Defense Analysis, meaning he had to return to teaching to bring in some much needed funds. However, it wasn't all doom and gloom, as Stony Brook University in New York offered him the chair of the math department role, which Simons accepted, staying at the university until 1978. And this year, 1978, would be the most important year of his life, as Jim took another shot at Wall Street and started a company that would change the landscape of global finance forever. With the failure of iStar still fresh in his mind, Jim Simons was determined to crack Wall Street's code. So, in 1978, he started a hedge fund management firm called Monometrics, with the name combining the words money and econometrics, 
hinting at their future dominance by using mathematics to determine their trading strategies. One of the first orders of business was bringing in like-minded people to work alongside Simons in creating the mathematical portion of their trading model. Jim brought in cryptanalyst Leonard Baum, who had also worked at the Institute for Defense Analysis, meaning he shared many of the same passions as Simons. However, Baum's trading mindset was different from most, with the fellow mathematician being an extremely stubborn trader, refusing to sell his positions until they went up in value. At first, this strategy was working well, with the fund generating around $43 million in profit between July 1979 and March 1982. With this newfound success, they renamed the company to Renaissance Technologies, and things looked good for the Baum and Simons partnership. But with the stock market, trouble is always lurking around the corner. As mentioned, Leonard Baum was a stubborn trader, someone who would literally not sell a position if it didn't make him money. This bad habit was eventually his undoing, with Baum holding on to his trades for so long in 1984 that he walked straight into a 40% loss on his positions, triggering a clause in his contract that allowed Jim Simons to sell his dwindling trades. Not only did Jim have to sell Baum's positions, but he also had to make some tough decisions for the future of the fund, leading to the removal of Baum and a complete overhaul of the mathematical side of the company. Leonard and himself had worked together for a very long time, so this decision couldn't have come easily. But as Simons put it himself, he had the buy low part, but he didn't always have the sell high part. And when you're trying to take down Wall Street with mathematics, there is no room for error. Now, it wasn't all bad news, as many of the fund's investors stood by Jim Simons and his fund, even after Leonard Baum's losses and removal from the company. However, he didn't want to make the same mistakes again. So in the late 1980s, Simons decided to search for more reliable ways to make trades, instead of relying on the currency exchanges that Baum had mastered. This was one of the most important turning points in the professor's life, as he was about to unlock the final piece of the puzzle to conquering global finance using mathematics, and that was quantitative trading. Quantitative investing. Quantitative trading. Quants. Short for quantitative, they're a special quant, and the whole Wall Street is shifting to quant. Quantitative trading was a match made in heaven for Jim Simons, as it took away the need for expert trading intuition and knowledge and relied totally on mathematics. To be successful with quant trading, you have to have a strong understanding of mathematical modeling and how to feed the correct data into your model to find the trades. Most quant models use fully automated trading, which is something Jim Simons and Renaissance technologies took advantage of during the early years of their fund. To put it simply, quantitative trading allowed Simons and his team to block out the noise of Wall Street and put all of their faith into their algorithms, models, and data, with some trades even making little to no sense to the team. But they still trusted their model to produce long-term profits. However, before they could make Renaissance technologies' quant dreams a reality, they needed to replace the loss of Leonard Baum. In 1988, Rentec launched the infamous Medallion Fund, which to this day still sets the standard for all quantitative trading-based funds. However, a key factor in the birth of the Medallion Fund was their newest arrival, James Axe. Axe's first task was to improve on the mathematical model designed by Leonard Baum, which he seemingly did with ease, given the instant results. During the 1988 trading year, the new model produced gross returns of 16.3%, but they were still a long way from taking down Wall Street, with the next year providing much smaller returns. Just a year after redesigning the model, Jim Simons was getting nervous, perhaps still shaken from the Leonard Baum losses, and he wanted to pause trading in 1989. However, Axe wasn't keen on slowing down, despite only making a gross return of 1% during the year. But Simons was having none of it, and once again showed his ruthlessness when making tough decisions, with the fund pausing their trading activity and Axe leaving the company shortly after. After yet another failed partnership, it would have been easy for the professor to give up on his trading dreams and go back to the world of education. But Jim Simons doesn't give up easily. 
And if you're going to revolutionize the way people trade, you can't remain defeated for too long. Despite their lack of long-term success during the 1980s, Renaissance Technologies and Jim Simons were still looking for the final piece of the puzzle. And Simons knew the perfect person. Elwin Burlikamp was a computer science and algorithm genius, known for discovering and creating many algorithms and theories which are still used in game theory and mathematics today. It was Burlikamp's love for algorithms that made him a perfect fit at Rentec with Leonard Baum and James Axe already laying the foundation for their trading model, allowing Elwin to make the final tweaks needed to create a profitable system. However, the results that Burlikamp's improvements produced must have caught even Jim Simons off guard. In 1990, Renaissance Technologies' new model pulled in an incredible 77.8% gross return, completely blowing away the competition and proving that mathematics was the future of trading. But like most of the stories of Simon's life, trouble was once again just around the corner. And this time, it had nothing to do with money. As you've probably gathered, Jim Simons was relentless in his pursuit of success and didn't mind making tough decisions when needed. However, this work ethic isn't the ideal work environment for everyone, and it was taking a toll on Elwin Burlikan, the genius who had produced the best results ever seen since the formation of the fund. After tasting success, Simons was putting more and more pressure on Burlikamp to improve the model. Despite making a 77.8% gross return in 1990, this was something that Elwin couldn't handle, and he made the difficult life choice to move away from the fund, meaning that once again, Simons was without a partner to bounce off. Although it was a tough decision for Burlikamp, he allegedly sold his share of the fund for six times what he paid for it softening the impact of having to leave such a profitable project. But there was one aspect of trading that even Burlikamp overlooked, and it was something that Simons knew he had to tackle in order to truly say he beat Wall Street. Up until the early 90s, the Medallion Fund had stayed away from trading stocks, which is something Jim Simons knew they needed to start doing. To achieve this, he recruited Robert Mercer and Peter Brown, forming the final partnership to maximize the potential of the fund's quantitative trading model. Both Brown and Mercer had PhDs in computer science, which fit the mold for a Rentec employee, with Simons trusting brilliant mathematical minds over trading knowledge. With the new duo settled into their new offices, it was time for them to get to work and create one of the most complex systems on Wall Street. Mercer and Brown created a computerized investment system, which is said to have taken 500,000 lines of code to develop. However, their dedication paid off, and by 1995, their system was accurate enough to predict the stock market, something Rentec's previous systems had never achieved. This was an amazing feat, and the following year's success was like something out of a movie. In 1995, the fund posted a gross return of 52.9%. In 96, it was 44.4%. In 98, it was 57.1%. And in 99, they continued their success with another great year. However, in the year 2000, the fund was about to do something even more impressive. With the fund running smoothly for the past five years, it was clear that the professor and his team of geniuses had discovered something amazing with the use of quantitative trading and mathematics. But the icing on top of the cake came in 2000. At the end of Y2K, the Medallion Fund recorded a staggering 128.1% gross return during the trading year, which was their best year ever since forming Rentec in the early 80s. This was a marker to the world that Jim Simons and his team were here for the long term with a strong display of consistency while pulling in insane returns for their investors. Even while the world was struggling, the Medallion Fund was impossible to defeat. The 2007 financial crisis caused major losses for nearly everyone involved with Wall Street, but not Simon's. His fund had some of its most profitable years while the world of finance was in turmoil. In 2007, the fund recorded a gross return of 136.1%, 152.1% in 2008, and 74.6% in 2009. This sort of success was unimaginable for anyone during that time, but quantitative trading and mathematics don't care about noise, even when the noise is coming from inside the fund. In 2017, yet another Renaissance Technologies partnership came to an end, but this time, it wasn't because of issues between Jim Simons and his colleagues. 
The Washington Post named Robert Mercer one of the most influential billionaires in American politics in 2015, meaning when he spoke, the mainstream media were listening. This was starting to cause issues for Simons and the fund, with Mercer attracting a lot of negative media surrounding his political ideas. So in 2017, Robert left the fund, which from the outside appeared to be a big loss for Rentec. But as mentioned, their trading system was now so strong that nothing was going to stop them from making a profit. And the Medallion Fund finished 2017 with an 85.4% gross return, proving that Simon's Fund was one of the most reliable and profitable funds in the world. Even more recently, the Medallion Fund is still a powerhouse on Wall Street. In 2020, the infamous fund surged 76%. While well, even some of Rentec's public funds lost money, their most documented years of trading are between 1988 and 2018, in which they only had one slightly negative year, but still recording a gross return of plus 1%. The fund has landed triple digit percentage returns thrice. Over the course of 30 years, the Medallion Fund had an average gross return of an unbelievable 66.07%, massively outperforming something like the S&P 500 which reportedly returns on average around 10%. But for Jim Simons, it wasn't all about making money. I remember thinking, I never met anybody like this before. Wow. Complete outsider mathematician was a code breaker. During his lifetime, Jim Simons amassed a net worth of $31.4 billion, but gave away around $6 billion to philanthropic causes, including setting up his own foundation called Math for America. Jim and his wife also set up the Simons Foundation, which contributes to many important scientific and health-related causes in America, including the Simons Foundation Autism Research Initiative. Even until his sad passing in New York City on May 10th, 2024, Simons diligently raised money for his charitable causes, leaving behind a lasting legacy and showing that you can go from being a humble professor trying to earn enough money to pay off his debts to one of the wealthiest men on Wall Street, all thanks to his first love, mathematics.